So in the previous video, we have seen a very simple example of hypothesis testing using coin toss example, right? It's a very, very simple example, right? We call it example one. Now in this video, let's look at a slightly more complicated, slightly more interesting, uh, interesting problem called difference of means. I'll explain you what difference of means is. And remember this whole idea of hypothesis testing is a very, very general idea in statistics, which can be applied for lots of problems, right? I started off this discussion with coin toss because it is very, very simple to understand. It is very, very simple to understand, right? So because in this case, if you think it was very easy, it was extremely easy for us to compute probability of the observation given a hypothesis, right? Given or null hypothesis. This was very easy to compute. This was extremely easy to compute in our previous case, right? Uh, in, in the next case, we, it, it will be slightly more complicated and we'll learn various techniques on how to compute it, right? So in this in this next example, let me tell you the, what the task is first. The task is as follows. The task is that you have two cities, let's call them city one and city two. They're two different cities, right? And the task at hand is that you want to determine, if you, you want to determine if the population mean, if the population mean, if the population means of heights, population means of heights of these of, of folks living of people living in these two cities, of people in these two cities, in these two cities, is same or not? Right? So is same or not? So what, what we are saying here is basically we have two cities, C1 and C2. There are lots of people living in C2, sorry, in C1 and C2. Now, if you take the whole population mean, remember, this is a population mean, not a sample mean, right? So if you were to look at all the people in C1, right? And if you get their mean height as mu1, that is their population mean. This is the population mean of the heights of people living in C1, right? Similarly, if you're living, if you take all the people living in C2 and take their population mean, it would be mu2. Now the question here is you want to determine if mu1 and mu2 are same or are they different? Are they same or are they different? This is the question that we want to solve. Right? This is very, very interesting example because this happens a lot of times in the real world. This happens tons of times. This is a very, very standard example, by the way. But remember, we can't we can't look at so city one may have a million people. Right, and city two may have two million people living there. So actually getting the population mean by going to every person and getting their height is impossible. Right? It's just too damn expensive for us. Right? So what do we do to solve this problem? Instead of using population mean, instead of using population mean, of course, we want to solve this problem and answer the question. Instead of population mean, we use a sample mean. In the early parts of this chapter, we understood what's the difference between a sample and a population. Sample is basically when you take a small subset of people in the city and compute the mean height, it's called a sample mean, right? The population is the total population, is all the people living in city one and city two, right? Now to solve this task at hand, let's go step by step, right? So first let's try to design the experiment that we want to perform. The experiment we want to perform, let's design it first, right? So we have city one and city two. I will say that I'll take 50, I'll randomly pick 50 people here, right? And I'll take their heights, right? This is basically a sample. This is a sample. These are sample heights. These are sample heights of 50 folks or 50 people living in that city, right? So let's call them H1, H2, H50. Similarly, for city two, I will again take 50, I'll again take the heights of 50 random people. And these are, these are sampled randomly, right? These are sampled randomly. Similarly, here, let's call them H1 dash, H2 dash, H3 dash, so on, so forth, H50 dash, right? This is also a sample. This is also a sample of 50, of size 50, of 50 people, basically. Now, once I compute the sample, again, remember, these cities may have populations which are extremely large. This city may have 1 million population. This city may have 2 million population. But we are randomly picking 50-50 here because 
picking 50 people and going to their homes and uh, and asking them for their height or measuring them is is possible right similarly here also we are taking only 50 people so instead of looking at population means these are samples right so now let's compute sample mean right so the sample mean of these 50 people let's call it as mu1 right so mu1 is the sample mean is basically h1 plus h2 so on h50 by 50 right this is the sample mean this is the mean height of all the people in the sample similarly let's call mu2 as h1 dash plus h2 dash so on h50 dash by 50 so this is the sample mean height of all the people living in city 2 right now since we can't do population means we'll use sample means itself for our experiment right this is remember i'm still at designing the experiment right let's assume let's assume that when i made the observation let's assume that i got my mu1 to be let's say 162 centimeters right and let's assume my mu2 i got it as 167 centimeters these are observations remember these are observations so i've designed my experiment and i'm observing these are observed values this is an observed value when I took 50 random people and got their heights, I got 162 centimeters. And when I took 50 random people from CT2, this is my observed value. Right? And of course, repeating this experiment multiple times also can get expensive. Let's assume I have very limited manpower and I sent some of my people to measure 50 people in CT1 and 50 people in CT2. They came back and said that the average height of this sample of 50 randomly selected 50 people in CT1 is 162 centimeters. Similarly, the average height of 50 randomly selected people in CT2 is 167 centimeters, right? Now I'll say that let's design our test statistic. Let's design our test statistic. In the previous example of coin toss, our test statistic was number of heads. Here I'll say my test statistic is mu1 minus mu2. Let's call this x, which is 162 minus 167 centimeters. Let's say absolute value of this. Let's just say absolute value, the difference or actually to, to make it simpler instead of taking the absolute value let's just say mu2 minus mu1 right? just for simplicity of course there are more complications that can arise if you take absolute value so this is 167 minus 162 which is equal to 5 centimeters so your test statistic is a, is basically the me the sample mean of heights of people in in city 2 minus the people in the sample mean of people living in city 1 the difference is 5 centimeters, right? Now let's design what is our null hypothesis. Let's, of course, we need to do design all of this, right? To design the experiment itself, to do hypothesis testing. Our null hypothesis will assume that there is no difference, that there is no difference, that there is no difference in population means. In population means of heights of these two cities. Of people living in these cities that's what i mean okay so this is my null hypothesis now what do we have to compute right to answer to either reject the null hypothesis or to accept the null hypothesis what is it what is the computation that i need to do what do i need to compute i need to compute what is the probability of x equals to five centimeters given my null hypothesis and remember what is x here this is very important what is x here x here is x here is the difference x here is the difference in 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 sample means that i've observed right difference in sample means right with sample size of 50 with sample size of 50 that is important right because if you recall you have taken only 50 heights here and 50 heights here so that is important so what is the probability of observing a sample means or sample means difference sorry what is the probability of observing a difference in sample means of 5 centimeters with a sample size of 50 if the null hypothesis is true and what is null hypothesis is true basically means it means that there is no difference in population means okay so let's try to read it carefully i'll try to write it in english because oftentimes we tend to lose the crux of the idea if you don't try to read it in English. I'll try to write it. This needs to be read as the probability of observing the probability of observing a difference of 
a difference of 5 centimeters in sample means in sample mean heights in sample mean heights right of sample size 50 of sample size 50 right between cities uh, between cities c1 and c2 if if there is no population difference if there is no population if there is no population uh, difference in means in mean heights that's what i mean right it's it's always important to read your english your equations in english statements otherwise we lose track of it right so look at it if there is no population difference in mean heights is nothing but this condition non h0 I'm just highlighting it in the same color. This blue thing, this part, this part basically means what you see in the blue here, right? Now, what you see here, x equals to 5 centimeters is basically this thing, a difference of 5 centimeters in sample mean heights of sample size 50 between cities C1 and C2, right? And of course, this probability here, this probability here is basically this probability, right? So, it's always important to read your equations in English otherwise you lose track of it I strongly recommend anybody who is reading an equation especially probability equations to see to actually read it in your mind and what this equation actually means right so given this interpretation of it now let's go case by case so the big question here is how do you compute it there's a big question right how do you compute it we'll see how to compute it in the next video right in the case of coin tosses it was very simple to compute Right? But for this, it's slightly tricky. We'll see how to compute these probabilities in the next video. For now, let's take two cases to understand hypothesis testing better. Case one, let's assume there is some way for us to compute it. And we got probability of x equals to 5 given h0 is let's say 0 0.2. Let's assume we got it as 0 0.2. 0 0.2 is nothing but 20%, right? Then what does it mean? Let's try to read it. Again, we should always read these equations in English, as I told you. What does this mean? This means that there is a that there is a 20% chance. Remember, there is a 20% chance. This 20 and this 20 are the same. There is a 20% chance, right? There is a 20% chance of observing a difference of 5 centimeters right of observing a difference of 5 centimeters in sample mean heights in sample mean heights of people in cities c1 and c2 with a sample size with a sample size of 50 cent, uh, 50 folks with a sample size of 50 if the null hypothesis is true what is null hypothesis is true basically means what it means is this null hypothesis being true basically implies if if there is no population if there is no population mean difference in heights right so again you should always read it this can get very tricky by the way hypothesis testing is something that i have seen a lot of people make mistakes including myself right that's why i always force myself whenever somebody is doing a hypothesis testing to go very very carefully with the step first i ask okay what is the task at hand right when i say what is the task i ask what is the experiment that you have designed what is the test statistic what is your null hypothesis and what is it that you are exactly computing and i try to read what people are computing in english right so what this says is that there is a 20 percent chance of observing a difference of five centimeters in sample heights of, of folks between c1 and c2 especially when you use a sample size of 50 if there is no population difference since there is a 20% chance here, remember, we are assuming. So the probability of making the observation, given our assumption, given our assumption, our assumption is nothing but our uh, null hypothesis. What is our observation? Our observation is x equals to 5. So the probability of making the observation, given our assumption is true, is 20%, which is significant, right? This 20% is a significant value. It's, it's not too small. It is actually considerably good. Since this is significant, we say this implies that our assumption, our assumption must be true. Our assumption must be true. 
which means we accept our null hypothesis because this because this probability is significant and the typical threshold we say is if it is less than 5% we will reject it otherwise we will accept it. Case 2, let us take case 2, right? Let us take case 2. What does case 2 mean? Probability of x equals to 5 given h0, let us assume is 0 0.03 or it is 3%, let us say. Let us say this is case 2. Then what does this mean? It means the probability of making the observation given our assumption is true, given our assumption is true is only 3%, which is which is quite small, which is a small which is a small chance. Because this is less than 5%, we tend to say, see, we have already made this observation, right? We have already made this observation. We can't say the observation is incorrect, right? Because we have already made the observation. We have seen a difference in when we started the experiment. We got 162 centimeters and we got 162 centimeters and 167 centimeters here. So it, these are observed values, right? Since these values are observed, right? Since these values are observed for us, I am saying that observation is not wrong. Observation is surely right because we have seen it already. Since this probability is very small, probably our assumption itself is wrong. So then we will say the assumption, this implies that our assumption must be incorrect. Our assumption must be incorrect, which means we reject our null hypothesis and accept our, which is, which is equal to accepting our alternative hypothesis. And what is alternative hypothesis here in this case? The alternative hypothesis is the exact opposite of null hypothesis. And what is it? It is basically saying that the population means are not the same. Right? This is how we have to think. It's very, very useful to think of uh, hypothesis testing from this framework. Probability of an observation given an assumption. Right? Now, since observation is something that you have already seen, it cannot be incorrect. Your assumption may be correct or incorrect. Your assumption is nothing but your null hypothesis. Right? So if this probability is too small, right? you have already seen the observation. So observation is not incorrect. Probably your assumption is incorrect. right? And hence we will say if this value is less than 5% and this is nothing but your p-value. This is nothing but your p-value. P-value is nothing but the probability of observation given assumption. right? So in this whole video, we have seen what happens in the case of difference of means. But we have not seen how to compute it, how to compute how to compute probability of x equals to 5 centimeters given h0. That's the topic for the next video. We'll see how to compute it using an idea called resampling. Using an idea called resampling and permutation testing. It's a very, very interesting idea in statistics. I really love this concept. It's a very, very innovative idea to say the least.